DaVinci Resolve is the best free video editor in history. And with the latest release of version 20, it just got even better yet again. And after using both DaVinci and CapCut for hundreds of projects over the past year, I know exactly what each of their strengths and weaknesses are. So in this video, I'll share the top 10 reasons why you choose DaVinci Resolve as your main editor. Number one is the price. DaVinci Resolve is 100% free. While there is a paid version, which is an optional upgrade, you really don't need it for 98% of video projects. Since in the free version, you can do more or less everything you need to do, especially if you're a beginner or a content creator. Then if you really want to upgrade, it's a $295 one-off fee, no subscription, and then you get a whole bunch of pro-level features that will take your videos to the next level. But again, you really don't need to upgrade. Whereas CapCut operate a subscription model, therefore you have to pay $10 per month to use it. And while $10 is isn't that much, it will add up over time. Nobody likes subscription models, and while I personally believe that you should pay for things that bring you value, the fact that DaVinci Resolve offers a fully fledged editing platform 100% free makes this $10 a month subscription seem a bit greedy, especially given the fact that CapCut over the past year have slowly moved some of their free features behind a paywall, causing you to pay for even basic stuff now. Whereas with DaVinci, there's practically no limit. Reason two, is ripple editing. So here I am inside CapCut about to cut up a clip. I've got two tracks here. One is my video followed by my audio, which was recorded into my microphone. And let's say I want to ripple edit using keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to line up the playhead and press Q to delete left. And CapCut only removed the one track, not both. Whereas here in DaVinci, if I do the same thing and press Q, it ripple edits both tracks to the left. Now, when editing any form of video project with dialogue and voiceover, you're going to be ripple editing a lot, which is why you need to be able to perform edits on multiple tracks with just one press of a button. And in CapCut, this has been the number one missing feature that we've wanted for a very long time. There are a couple of workarounds to this. The main one I've found is turning both clips into a compound clip and then editing that one single track, almost as if you were using the built-in audio. But the thing is you don't always want to be using compound clips with every edit since it takes away a bit of flexibility from your overall editing experience. Whereas in DaVinci Resolve, it has no problem at all ripple trimming left and right, cutting through all the tracks on the timeline simultaneously. So again, if you edit a lot of dialogue, then DaVinci is definitely the better option here. By the way, feel free to download my keyboard shortcuts file that I use in all my edits to speed edit and go 10 times faster than I would otherwise manually selecting tools like the blade and the mouse with every cut. So if you want my exact keyboard shortcuts file, just follow the link below. The next thing DaVinci is better at is multi-track editing. So here I've got a project in CapCut that was quite a big one. As you can see, I have heaps and heaps of layers here on my timeline, like way, way too many. And something I find a bit annoying about CapCut is that every timeline track is dedicated solely to one thing. So as you can see here, I've got four tracks of video, then five of text, two more of video like 10 to 20 more of text above that, followed by some graphics, followed by a video and an effect. And the reason I had to do that is because I wanted to layer all these elements on top of each other. For example, if I'm building out an explainer video where I've got multiple bits of text and I need the text to be above other layers lower down. Unfortunately, it's not possible to drag a text element down onto a video layer. It can only be on another text layer, which means you end up with like a thousand text layers and way too much empty space on your timeline that makes it really hard to find things throughout your edit. Whereas in DaVinci, any video related element can be used on the same track as other things like text. This means I can use the empty gaps on the different tracks to keep my timeline layer height to a minimum because a clean timeline is so much easier to navigate and make changes later on once you're deeper into the edit. Number four is editing long form projects. As you can see here in CapCut, this is a mini course that I was editing together and my timeline is over 50 minutes long. But this is not one single video. This is actually made up of five or six different videos that I wasn't able to separate due to CapCut only allowing one timeline per project. And when you've got lots of familiar assets that you want to copy paste across multiple videos, CapCut unfortunately won't let you since you can only copy paste within the same project. And this 
this is what forced me to edit all of these videos on the same timeline, making my project look like a game of Space Invaders. Whereas in DaVinci Resolve, you can have as many timelines as you like. All you have to do is right click, then go timelines, create new timeline, and voila, you can start a brand new video edit and then copy and paste assets from one timeline to another. So if you do edit long form content, online courses, or anything longer than about 10 minutes, then DaVinci is going to be the better option. The next way DaVinci beats CapCut is for motion graphics. So DaVinci has its own section of the program called Fusion, where it's basically like a mini After Effects located right here in the editor and you can do all kinds of really high level visual effects here. And while I struggle sometimes with basic text animations, I'm going to pretend like I know what I'm talking about here, but DaVinci really is a high level program for customizing motion graphics if you're into that kind of thing, and is even used in Hollywood productions to achieve high level visual effects. And while CapCut does have some basic drag and drop effects that you can add, you are limited to the ones they have here, which aren't always the ones that you need in your edits, although they're definitely can be cool sometimes, especially if you're a beginner and you don't want to make things manually. Next, DaVinci beats CapCut at color correction. In case you didn't know, DaVinci started primarily as a color correction tool and eventually added editing capabilities, but this is really its bread and butter. So as you'd imagine, it's got all kinds of like really high level color correction menus and you can go so deep on color and making color adjustments that it will make your head spin, which to be fair, isn't always necessary, especially if your use case is social media or you're making videos just for personal use. However, if you are really looking to present your videos in the most professional way possible and have them looking really nice and cinematic, then DaVinci Resolve's color correction tools are second to none. As you can see, I put this color correction together in like 20 seconds using my ultra simplified workflow, which I have another video about on my channel. But if you are a color nerd, I know there's a lot of people out there that geek out over this stuff, then DaVinci Resolve is going to tickle your nerdy little fan see a lot more than the extremely simple sliders of CapCut will. Even though yes, CapCut does have a few different color options here. However, they're obviously nowhere near the level of DaVinci. The next way DaVinci beats CapCut is audio. Now they've just added a whole bunch of amazing features. And again, DaVinci proves its value here in its entire menu that it's got here in the Fairlight section of the editor that is dedicated solely to improving your audio. And again, you can get super geeky with this and make all kinds of improvements, add filters and all kinds of effects that will improve your audio, as well as accessing some simple ones here on the edit page. They've even just added a new AI tool to the latest version called Audio Assistant, where it basically auto mixes your entire project, almost like a professional sound mixer was doing it, resulting in extremely impressive sound quality. And while CapCut does have a couple of options for audio improvement, and these are actually really good, I will say from using them many, many times, they are also a little bit unreliable. I find sometimes some of these actually cause your voice to sound worse and not better. The most impressive features are to do with the isolation of sound and vocals, like this reduced noise will basically get rid of any background noise, no matter how loud, and separate audio can totally deconstruct an entire song based on the instrument playing. However, DaVinci does also have a similar feature here. Here's another cool one. Let's say you have a two minute video and you want to use a music track over it, However, that music track is four minutes long. Well, usually the process would be either just trimming it at the end and adding a fade, which really just sounds amateur when you hear the music fade out at the end without any kind of final climax. Or you would have to cut up the clip manually with the blade, like try and identify different sections and re-edit the music yourself to try and fit the right length, but it doesn't always work to the exact timing you're looking for. So it's normally a bit of a process. However, not anymore with one of DaVinci 20's latest features. And that is if you select your music clip, then under audio, go to AI Music Editor. And now I'm going to select Live Trim. And this is going to allow me to drag this audio track to the length that I want it to be. And then AI will automatically re-edit this music track so it fits perfectly in that time span while also sounding natural. And it's done. So if we zoom in here, you'll see that it's made a cut right there. It's determined that this is going to be the spot where nobody's going to notice that a part of the track was cut out. And as you can see, the beats of this song are continuous. I'll play it back so you can listen.
pretty good. I will say though that this one is part of the paid DaVinci Resolve Studio update. And no, CapCut doesn't have this feature, at least yet. Number nine is export settings. Here I am on the deliver page and you'll see that when I go up to export my final video here, there are so many great options I can choose from. Whether I want to send this project to another editor, choose from a preset like ProRes, H.265, H.264 or customize it completely. Now just quickly here is CapCut for comparison with very few options to choose from and not too many codecs. It doesn't have H.265. It will let you export just the audio, a GIF or the video with everything in it. However, going back to DaVinci, there are so many more export options here. Firstly, there are heaps of different export resolutions. So if you shot at HD, 4K, 8K and the paid studio version even goes up to 32K resolution which is very necessary. And you can really get really nerdy here with your export settings if you want to include any specific things in your export. The main thing that all of us want really is higher quality with our videos. And generally I've found that I can do that by exporting my videos at H.265. The final way that DaVinci Resolve beats CapCut is that DaVinci Resolve, AKA Blackmagic, are a reliable company. You probably heard that CapCut got banned in the US for a short period, then was reinstated and then it's facing a reban since it is tied to ByteDance, which also owns TikTok, which was banned. But basically when you invest fully in the CapCut ecosystem, you're tying yourself to ByteDance, which is a Chinese owned company that seems to get heavily regulated, especially in the US. Try not to say anything offensive. And this causes the company overall to be a bit more unreliable. I know there was a lot of users that when this happened, couldn't get a refund. They just purchased a full year of CapCut Pro and they had no idea what to do. They couldn't use the editor that they'd paid for and CapCut had zero customer service responding to these people's messages. Now, again, this was only in the US. So if you're somewhere else like I am here in Australia, it's probably not going to be as big of a thing. But I'd also just add to that whole reliability aspect as well with Black Magic. Black Magic? What were they thinking? Is that they've been offering DaVinci Resolve completely for free for like 15 to 20 years. And they haven't changed that at all. They haven't put features behind the paywall. While they do have their paid version of the software, it's not needed for most people. And it's something that they seem to pride themselves on offering a really powerful video editing tool completely for free for anyone. And that instills goodwill. You can't help but feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Again though, I just wanna say it's not unethical for companies to ask for money in exchange for a product like CapCut is, because if they were to offer this editor completely for free, like what's the business model? How are they going to earn money? Well, obviously with TikTok, and that's also how Blackmagic earns their money is with their camera line. Hence why they're offering the software for free so you can edit videos either shot with their cameras or with other cameras. Anyway, I digress. I think Blackmagic has the reliability factor. Whether that's something for you is for you to decide. So those are 10 reasons you'd wanna choose DaVinci Resolve over CapCut. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that DaVinci Resolve is the better software, which is why you wanna stay tuned for my next video that I'll be working on extremely soon, sharing 10 ways that CapCut beats DaVinci Resolve. So hit subscribe if you wanna see that video show up on your feed very soon, because I wouldn't write CapCut off completely. It's actually a fantastic editor and I I've used it mostly over the last year to achieve some really good looking edits, both for my YouTube channel and paid products. Anyway, if you can think of any other reasons DaVinci Resolve beats CapCut, let me know down below. And if you're still new to video editing and want to learn my proven system for editing videos from start to finish, just like I edited this video here, then check out this video. In it, I share 20 years worth of editing insights in under 30 minutes.